Hemostasis and Bleeding Disorders. This animation will illustrate the normal clotting processes that occur after vascular injury. The two coagulation cascade pathways will be reviewed, both the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways. In addition, several conditions due to defects within the clotting cascade will be reviewed. Normal hemostasis is a consequence of tightly regulated processes that allow blood to maintain its fluid state in normal vessels, yet also permits rapid formation of a hemostatic clot at the site of vascular injury. When vascular injury occurs, there is a brief period of arteriolar vasoconstriction, which helps trigger platelet activation and activation of the clotting cascade. Let's take a closer look at an injured vessel. In this illustration, the normal blood vessel contains red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. After blood vessel injury, layers of smooth muscle cells, collagen fibers, and endothelium are cut and become exposed. Let's take a look at the formation of the primary clot. Platelets encounter the highly thrombogenic subendothelial extracellular matrix. This matrix contains collagen and the adhesive glycoprotein von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor causes platelets to adhere to the extracellular matrix and become activated. Activated platelets undergo a dramatic change in shape. Secretory granules containing ADP are released and serve as a potent activator of platelet recruitment and aggregation. Thromboxane A2 is also released from activated platelets. It is a powerful vasoconstrictor and enhances platelet aggregation. These events collectively lead to the formation of the primary hemostatic plug. Next, the two coagulation cascade pathways, the extrinsic and intrinsic pathway, lead to formation of the secondary clot, extrinsic pathway. The extrinsic pathway is the most physiologically relevant pathway because it occurs following vascular damage. Following damage to a blood vessel, factor 7 comes into contact with tissue factor, forming the tissue factor factor 7A complex. This complex activates factor 10 to form factor 10A, which converts prothrombin, or factor 2, into thrombin, also known as factor 2A. Thrombin then activates fibrinogen, or factor 1, so that it forms fibrin, also known as factor 1A. Fibrin then fills in the primary hemostatic plug to create a meshwork, which tightly binds the plug together. Red and white blood cells become trapped inside the plug and form a definitive secondary hemostatic plug. Intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway begins when factor 12 encounters high molecular weight caninogen, which is expressed on collagen, and is activated to form factor 12A. Factor 12A then activates factor 11 to factor 11A. Factor 11A converts factor 9 into factor 9A. Factor 9A, in turn, activates factor 10 to factor 10A, which converts prothrombin into thrombin. As in the extrinsic pathway, thrombin activates fibrinogen to form fibrin, which again will fill in the primary hemostatic plug, creating a meshwork that will tightly bind the plug together. Similarly, red and white blood cells become trapped inside the plug to further form the definitive secondary hemostatic plug. Meanwhile, in the liver, activation of the clotting cascade is set into motion. The fibrinolytic cascade will reduce the size of the clot and, over time, dissolve it completely. Let's go back to our secondary clot. When plasminogen, an inactive plasmin precursor produced by the liver, encounters TPA synthesized by the endothelium, plasminogen is converted into plasmin. Plasmin then breaks down fibrin and leads to dissolution of the clot. We will now illustrate several relevant bleeding disorders. Von Willebrand disease. Von Willebrand disease is the most common hereditary bleeding disorder. In this disease, there is a defect in von Willebrand factor, 
which normally mediates the binding of GP1B on platelets to collagen. This defect inhibits primary hemostasis and increases one's tendency to bleed. bernard soulier Syndrome bernard soulier Syndrome is a defect or deficiency in GP1B, the receptor for von Willebrand factor found on platelets. A defect or deficiency of GP1B also leads to a lack of primary clot formation and an increased tendency to bleed. Thus, bernard soulier Syndrome without functional GP1B involves platelets that are unable to attach to the subendothelium. Glanzmann's thrombosthenia. Glanzmann's thrombosthenia is characterized by a defect in GP2B3A, a platelet fibrinogen receptor complex. With this defect, primary hemostasis is inhibited because fibrinogen cannot crosslink platelets.